Hello, welcome to basics of noise and its measurement. Uh, today we will continue our discussions from where we left yesterday and what I am essentially going to talk about is uh, the concept of Fourier integrals. So, uh, these uh, concepts become relevant specifically for those signals where the time period is extremely large or theoretically it is infinite. So, in those type of situations uh, the notion of Fourier integral comes in very handy and that is what we are going to discuss in today's class. So, Fourier integrals. So, let us uh, say that let us say that we have a function f x f t and this is a non periodic function. In another words it is periodicity is infinite, its periodicity is infinite. The other thing, so this whole integral is uh, uh, valid uh, if there are certain set of conditions which are satisfied. So, it has it, it, uh, it can be non periodic and then the other thing is, but it has to be piece wise continuous. Okay. It has to be piece wise continuous, what is, so this is, this is a continuous function. This function is piece wise continuous, it is piece wise continuous, it is continuous in this region, it is also continuous in this region, here it is not continuous, but in this piece it is continuous, in this piece it is continuous okay. and so third thing is that it should have right hand and left hand derivatives at all points. So, the mathematical basis for these assumptions uh, you can go and dig deeper into books on mathematics or engineering mathematics, but if these conditions are satisfied then I am going to directly write the results. Then I can express this function f t in terms of cosine and sine and in using this <coughs> format. So, then f t is equal to integral from 0 to infinity some function. So, please remember here a is not a constant, but it is a function of a parameter w or you can call it omega cosine omega t. So, a is a function of omega plus another function b which again depends on omega and sin of omega t and we will define what omega is and then I am integrating this whole thing with respect to omega and what are these functions? A omega equals 1 over pi integral of minus infinity to infinity f v cosine v dv and b of omega equals 1 over pi integral minus infinity to infinity f of v sin of v dv. So, this is the Fourier integral. So, I can express a piece wise continuous function which is which can be periodic or non period does not matter should have right hand and left hand derivatives at all points. If there is any function like this then I can express it in a cosine form and sine form using 
this Fourier integral and I have directly written the results and the proof of this you can I will encourage you to go and check into some books on mathematics okay? and we will do an example to make things clearer. So, example. <clears throat> so, suppose you have a function like this. So, your function is such that f t equals 1 between the limits and it is 0 elsewhere. Okay. So, this is 1, this is minus 1 and the interesting thing about this function is that it is 0 all across the whole length. So, this unlike other functions which we handled earlier, this is not a periodic function and it is just having a bump in the region of minus 1 to 1 and at all other places it is 0. Okay. So, then we see that it is piecewise continuous and also I can compute the derivative of this from right side as well as from left side at all the points. So, it meets the differentiability requirement and it has it is not necessarily periodic. So, it is meeting all our requirements. So, for such a function I can express this function f t. So, this is my f t as integral of 0 to infinity a as a function of omega cosine of omega t plus b a function of omega cosine of omega t oops sorry sine of omega t and I am going to integrate it with respect to omega. So, omega here is a dummy variable after integration it goes away after integration only t exists omega is absorbed into the mathematics. And now, what I will do is I will calculate what is a omega and b omega. So, a omega we had seen is nothing but 1 over pi integral of minus infinity to infinity f of v cosine omega v dv. Okay. So, when we look at this function f of t, its value is non-zero only in the range of minus 1 to 1. So, if I am integrating this function f of v from minus infinity to plus infinity, the value of f of v will be only non-zero in minus 1 to 1. At all other places, it is going to be 0. right? So, I can write it as 1 over pi minus 1 to 1. And what is the value of f of v in the range in this uh, range? It is 1 times cosine of omega v times dv. So, this equals 1 over pi omega sin omega v minus 1 to 1. Okay. Is this is equal to two over pi omega sine of omega. What am I doing? I am just putting the value of v as one in first case. So the value of the function becomes sine omega, and then minus sine of minus omega. So it's two sine omega, and then b of omega equals 1 over pi integrate minus infinity to infinity f of v sin omega v 
d v and that equals 1 over pi minus 1 to 1, 1 times sin of omega v d v and that is 0. Because the integral of sin function is cosine which is an even function and if in the limits 1 to minus 1 the difference between these two values will be 0. So, f of t, so what is our goal? We have to express f of t in this form. So, I am going to substitute a omega here. So, f of t is nothing but integral of 0 to infinity. So, remember when I am writing the expression for f of t, the limits are 0 to infinity, not from minus infinity to infinity and you can explore the mathematical basis by referring some standard books. So, this is 0 to infinity 2 over pi omega sin omega cos of omega t d w. So, this is the Fourier integral representation of f of t. See one representation was the graphical format which we saw. This is another uh, representation of the same function, uh, but in an integral form. What you do is that if you take this function and integrate it and you integrate it with respect to omega, you will get some function out of it. Once you integrate it omega will be gone, right? omega will be, will be gone. So, you will get finally a function of f t and when you will plot that f t, it will hopefully it should come out to be same as the original function which we had plotted like this. And you have to integrate in the limits 0 to infinity. Okay. So, that is important. Now, what you can do is see integrating to infinity suppose so you get some uh, integrating to infinity uh, may be tricky. So, what you can make this is So, I can replace this. So, to give you a backdrop, when we were doing Fourier series, we had uh, represented a function in terms of sines and cosines. And there the number of sine terms and cosine terms theoretically could be infinite. So, if I take 100 terms, I will get some level of accuracy. If I get 200 terms, I will get more level of accuracy. If I get 20,000 terms, I will get more accurate representation of the same function in terms of sines and cosines. Similarly, if I do integration up to infinity, I will get a good result, precise result. But if I truncate it and I bring that number to say some finite number a, then I will get some approximate result, but it may be good enough. But there are issues with that approximation. So, I will show you. So, the what I am trying to say is that if f t I get from this integral expression and we can for different values of a. Theoretically, it has to be infinite, but I cannot suppose I want to just limit my exercise 
to some finite number because especially in when I am doing numerical integration I cannot in integrate in finite times right. So, I have to do a finite number of times and when I am doing finite number of times there are some issues with this integration approach and I wanted to show you some results. So, what we have done is we have used the same relation and the same function and then I have integrated the, uh, the expression I have integrated the expression such that that a the limit was 0 to 8 and what you see is that you get a peak point here. So, you get a peak point here it is not flat as we would have expected it <coughs> and here you get a bump at the edges you get a bump here you get a bump here and beyond these bumps it is fairly close to 0. So, we would think that let us see what happens if I make 8 uh, if I increase the value of a and I make it 16. So, this is what I get ok. So, again it got a little flatter, but then you have this bump here and then it is flattening out beyond 1 and it is also flattening out beyond 1, but remember that these bumps are here there is a bump here there is a bump here ideally it should be perfectly flat then you look at this thing. So, once again you get a bump here you get another bump here this is in this zone it is pretty close to 1 here also it is pretty close to 1 here also it is pretty close to 1, but at the boundaries where our uh, derivative of the function was not well defined you take a right hand derivative and left hand derivative they will have different values you have this bump and we have this the, these graphs correspond to 3 values a equals 8, 16 and 32 and these bumps are not going away and it does not matter if you make this 64 or 128 or 20,000 or 1 lakh these bumps will become sharper the length of this width the, the width will become more and more close to 1, but this bump will not go away same thing about this this bump will not go away this bump will not go away and this is because our function was having non fine uh, uh, it was not having unique derivatives at the point of the jump where it was jumping. If you compute the derivative from one side it is something if you compute it from other side something different. So, what so this effect and this effect does not go away if you just increase the number of terms it does not go away. So, it is not because you, you did not have sufficient number of terms it is just because the mathematics of this approach is such that these bumps are preserved and this effect is known as Gibbs effect Gibbs effect ok. This effect is known as Gibbs effect you will see the same thing for Fourier series also and you will see the same issue prop up in Fourier trans uh, this uh, Fourier integral approach also same issue Gibbs effect is there in uh, Fourier series and also it is present in Fourier integral. So, this is something to remember about. So, that uh, covers the treatment of uh, uh, whatever I wanted to cover in uh, this particular class and in the next class we will move on to the final goal which is Fourier transform for uh, functions. So, we will in the four, fifth class and sixth class we will discuss Fourier transforms in detail and that is how we are going to close this topic. Thank you very much and we will see you again tomorrow.